Welcome to this Xtuple video. In this video, I'll be taking you through the Financial Reporting Engine, or FRE as I like to call it. This will actually be a series of videos, and in the first one, we'll simply look at how we generate financial reports. So I'm going to work from the accounting desktop and navigate to financial statements. Now, I could go from accounting, financial statements, and click view financial report, or I could use the toolbar button across the top of the screen to do the same thing. But we're going to work from the, uh, the accounting desktop. So I'm going to click on financial statements. And what this allows me to do is to view my financial statement on the screen. And at the end, we'll print it. And in addition to that, we'll schedule it through Xtuple Connect so that we can have it emailed to ourselves as a PDF attachment. Uh, the first thing we need to do when we're viewing financial reports is to select a financial report definition from the list. Now, later in a later video, we'll look at how these are created. In this case, I'm going to look at the Pro Diem Income Statement, so I'll select that from the list. The next thing we need to select is the column layout. Now, we won't actually create column layouts later on because the, there are system financial reports from which we can copy that have column layouts predefined that cover, uh, to be honest, uh, every client that I've worked with, uh, we've been able to satisfy their requirements with the built-in column layouts. However, you can create your own column layouts if you choose to. They control things like uh, what we're going to see in terms of is it month or month quarter to date or is it a quarter to date report definition? Are we looking at year information, year over budget, etc.? So I'm actually going to select um, month and then we have a decision. Do we want to see a trend report? In other words, multiple periods or do we want to see a single period? So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to select the current accounting period and then I'm going to click Query. That generates our financial report for us on the screen. Now, if I'd like to see a trend report, I can click on the Trend Report checkbox and then select what type of trend I'd like to see. Would I like to see monthly, uh, quarterly, or yearly. Let's stick for now with monthly. And I'm going to scroll down and look at uh, Q3, or Q, excuse me, Q4, uh, October, November, and December. And I'm simply clicking on these. And then I'm going to click Query again. And you'll notice that the columns that we see correspond to the periods that we selected. So now we're seeing a trend report. If I wanted to see quarterly trend information for 2014, uh, I could do that and click Query. And now I am seeing quarterly information for 2014. So that's what happens when you do a trend report. In addition to that, we have the option of displaying or not displaying account numbers. Uh, displaying account numbers is handy when the report definition is for internal use, uh, but if we're sending it to the bank or we're sending it to investors, we may not want to show account numbers. So we have that choice. I simply click on account numbers, click query again, and you'll notice that the GL account numbers show up uh, next to each account. Additionally, we can show GL accounts that have a zero balance by clicking zero amounts. So if we do that, we're now seeing all of the GL accounts, including those that have no activity across the entire uh, set of periods that were selected. Now, once we've got the report looking the way we'd like to on the screen, we're now ready to generate it perhaps to a printed format or even schedule it as a PDF attachment uh, to an email. So if I click Preview, and let me resize this so you can see it, I'm now seeing my financial report printed to paper. I'm showing it to you on the screen, but this is where we could print it to paper if we chose to. In addition, if I click Schedule, I also have the option then if I have uh, Xtuple Connect installed to actually send this to myself or anyone else for that matter 
um, as a PDF attachment. And in fact, I could schedule the generation of this, say, after midnight tonight. So I'd like to see this income statement generated as of 1 a.m. I could do that by uh, simply scheduling it uh, like that and clicking schedule and it would send it to me by email. Okay, the last thing that I'd like to point out and I'm going to uh, change our report a little bit here and go back to uh, just the current month and let me uh, find December on the list. There we go, and I will go ahead and query that. The other thing that's important to note is that in some views, it's possible to drill down into the detail behind a specific number. So for example, uh, this is a, a demo database, so there's not a lot of activity in here. But if I right click on that number, literally the 1.033 million number, if I right click on that, I can select view transactions and it will show me the GL transactions that make up that number. And depending on the nature of that transaction, I may be able to drill even further. So I can right click on one of the entries that I see here and click, in this case it's an invoice, and actually drill into the invoice. Um, you can actually drill further than this. I'm not sure why you would want to from a financial statement, but if I needed to, I could even drill down into the customer themselves, for example, and see the, uh, uh, the customer workbench. So all of that is being done literally from a financial statement. Okay, so that's a quick um, overview of how you render financial statements. In a later video, we'll look at how you actually create the uh, formatting to lay out the financial statement the, like, the way you would like to see it. Thanks for attending this video.